Okay, so I finished my run. This is the last long run before the marathon. I did about 10 and a half kilometers, one house to the other, in 67 minutes. Not bad. Hi guys! So today's video is all about running. I just did a 10k this morning, which is my last big run before the half marathon on Sunday. And a lot of you have been requesting me to do a running tips video, so that's what today is about. Before we start with the tips, I just want to give you guys a bit of a background. I've been running pretty much my whole life. In school, I was a sprinter and in college and then I kind of gave up running and then I used to just run for fitness because I hate going to the gym and one fine day a friend of mine said why don't you run the half marathon and I'm running and I didn't know what I was getting into I signed on and I ran my first half and then I just got addicted to distance running and it's been I think what now five six years since then and I have pretty much run uh, every Mumbai marathon except for last year because i didn't train at all with the wedding and everything going crazy and uh, yeah i train myself i don't have a coach i don't have anyone who trains me um so this is what i've learned over the years about running this video is for people who are beginners who want to start running or people who've been running but want some tips and tricks this is for you okay so the first thing you want to keep in mind is that any Anybody can run and I'm not joking this is literal uh, that's the best thing about distance running anybody can train their body and mind and you can do the distance it's not something you need to be like really fit to do or um, you know really like athletic to do with distance running everybody's running their own race and that's the best part about it and I've seen people with different fitness levels or different problems make it through that finish line of a half marathon and even a full marathon distance running is all about your mental strength I always say it's 80% mind 20% body because yeah you do have to train your body and be strong enough to do that distance but even for someone who's really fit you need to be mentally strong to push your body otherwise you're not going to be able to do this so if you want to run a marathon or a half marathon say you want to do it and you will be able to do it with the right kind of training number two listen to your body now this is something i've learned over the years because i've trained myself your body will tell you what pace to go at you know your body will keep giving you signals there's some days where i just fly where i'm just like oh my god i 10k seems like nothing and then there are other days where i'm just like only 5k okay you can do it cherry so it totally depends on a lot of factors like what you ate the previous night uh, you know your fitness levels at that point some days you're not feeling too well some days you have a bit of a niggle in your knee or your ankle or somewhere and you're just not able to push lots of factors you can't really narrow in on why that happens but I will say that listening to your body really helps so I pace myself according to how I'm feeling on a certain day and very often I decide to do a certain like number of kilometers and then if I don't feel up to it I stop because I listen to how I am feeling you know you're not a professional athlete at the end of the day you are just a person who's trying to run a half marathon or just run for fitness and um, you don't want to push yourself too too much you want to kind of enjoy what you're doing which is why I always say your body is the best pacer for you. Listen to your body and pace yourself. Okay, the next thing that's really important is your gear. Now, when you're running, there are two things that you do not want to save on. You really want to get the best. Running shoes and your sports bra, especially for women. Like a sports bra is a must, must, must. I will say I've tried multiple running shoes over the years and uh, some have worked for me, some have not worked for me. What I usually do, this is how I pick up a pair. I go into the shops, the ones which have the treadmill, do a one one, two kilometer run in the pair that I prefer and also I would do a gait analysis so if you're a new runner and you're just looking at starting out I would say go to one of the stores with the treadmill they will analyze your run and your gait and tell you whether you're a neutral runner you're a pronator so basically people who are uh, there's some people who are flat footed there's some people whose feet move inwards when they run which is me like I tend to do a bit of a with my foot uh, so you need more cushioning on the inside these are all things I've learned over the years like when I started honestly I just used to wear a pair of sneakers that I owned I didn't even know I don't even remember what brand they were and I didn't think that it was important then I invested in my A6 my gel kin size which I ran in for two years but now I kind of find that a bit bulky and I prefer a lot like lighter leaner shoe so over the last few years I've used everything Adidas, Nike, uh, Asics, they all have great running shoes, it just depends on what works for you. So today this is what I use which is the Nike Luna Epic which is a great distance running shoe. I'm deciding between these and the Zoom Fly 
uh, for Sunday what I want to wear but my all-time favorite running shoe has to be the Vapor Max like that is the best running shoe for like shorter distances whether it's like four up to like four or five kilometers nothing beats that shoe right now for me but I have multiple running shoes and I pick them depending on the distance and and where I'm running the terrain all that is really important as well so yeah definitely a good pair of shoes and a sports bra that supports you really well I usually like the Nike sports bras but I'm sure there are lots of other the inexpensive options as well if you find that too expensive in terms of tops and bottoms i wear only tights when i run like i know a lot of people like to wear shorts i like to wear tights because i feel like it kind of holds my leg in place i don't know maybe it's psychological but i've always run in tights and i just feel comfortable in them for tops i use these the dry fits you can see that it's really really thin and they dry really quickly like i when I came home, this was like dripping with sweat and I'm stinking right now, but my top is dry. Uh, these really, really work well and you get them in, with like any brand whatsoever. Just look for a dry fit sign and buy that because you don't want to wear something that's wet like for a long run. Like you really don't want to be like sweaty and wet throughout. So these are really, really great for that. Now those are just the basics. Obviously you can do water bottles or uh, like funky water bottles. A lot of people have those holding hand water bottles or uh, a water bottle belt. I used to wear one of these for years, like for two years, I think. But now I've trained myself to do at least a 10K without water. Like today, I didn't drink any water in between. I drink water before I start and then when I end. So, um, because I just like to be free and light. So now I currently run only with my Apple Watch and my headphones. Like today when I carried my phone, I was like, oh my God, this feels like a weight because I was gonna film some stuff. But earlier I used to wear an armband with my phone and my music. That's pretty much it. So the lighter you are, the better when you're running. You will feel more comfortable. Carry a small bottle of water if you feel that you need to hydrate yourself initially because that takes a while where you can kind of run without drinking water for you know a certain distance stretching is really 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 important i don't know how many times i said really but it is really important now when you run you put your body through a lot like it might just seem like a 10k run but you're putting your body through a lot and you have to stretch before and after so before i do a really quick stretches like some lunges squats uh, a little bit of stretching here and there to engage my body jump around a bit because I usually get up and run or I run in the evening sometimes but my, the ideal time to run is in the morning so what I do is I wake up brush my teeth change stretch for five minutes and I'm out the door that's how I like it but a lot of people like to stretch for maybe 30 minutes 40 minutes whatever works for your body as I said listen to your body but after I do a really elaborate stretching routine which is a mix of strength training and stretching so when you're running your whole body is engaged and it really puts your body through a lot so you want to have that muscle you want to have that strength so this is usually what I do after a run fun it's have a mantra or a motto uh, now when I run you know as I said there are lots of times where you're dying to give up and you're just like tired and knackered and you're like I can't do this and that's when you want to think of something powerful uh, that's going to push you forward I have two uh, the first one is there is no pride without pain and the second one is pain is temporary pride is forever now these are two things i keep telling myself when i run running is a painful sport people if you do anything above a 10k you know this your body starts to hurt your legs really hurt at one point you feel like your legs are going to just dissect themselves and move off your body uh, but uh, yeah so that that is one pride because running a marathon for me is really something i feel proud about because initially I used to train myself really aggressively for it and I was really proud of the timings that I would get this year of course I haven't trained much 
I'm going to be traveling and I'm going to be running, which is going to be crazy because I get back the day before the marathon. But it's all good. I mean, I really wanted to run and I had to go on the trip as well. So it's all going to work out. I will run. I don't know how fast I'll be, but I will run. Now, the next thing is slightly contradictory because uh, there's two things to it. You're competing with yourself is number one. The other thing is you kind of got to feed off of other people's energy as well. Let me explain. So number one, you're competing with yourself because you're not Kenyan. Only the Kenyans are in front and only they are winning the marathon or the half marathon. You are not uh, unless you're a really serious athlete. Uh, the rest of us are just running to better our own time. So you're competing with yourself. So for me, my best time, I think, is still from 2014, which was two hours and three minutes and some seconds, which I think is my best. Now, if I were to better that time at any stage with proper training, that would be my goal. But the other thing you want to do is feed off other people's energy. Have you ever noticed that, you know, the leaders of a marathon or a half marathon are always stuck together like a pack and they all run together, like, you know, in sync. They're all feeding off the leader and his energy and they're keeping his pace. That is something if you're a professional athlete, yeah, you could do that all the way. So I do it in spurts. When I see someone who's running really well, I take their energy for maybe like a kilometer or two until I can keep pace with them and then I get back to my usual pace. So it kind of helps you go forward and like better your time a bit and then get back to your pace. It's a really, really interesting strategy, which is why a lot of people run in groups. I hate running in groups because I'm very competitive. I like to run my own race and uh, because I train myself, I'm not used to running with people. So um, yeah, this is pretty much what I do to just, you know, get a little faster sometimes but otherwise i like to run at my own pace okay the next important thing is rest as much as you run and i don't mean this literally like i don't mean like if you ran a 10k for one hour sleep for one hour that's not what i mean i mean uh, make sure your body gets enough rest because when you're running it's it is a, like a very very powerful sport you're putting in a lot of energy so like today i did a 10k Tomorrow I will probably just stretch and take the day off or at the most do a 1-2k start again on you know Tuesday. Keep a good distance between your big runs like you need to have that gap your body needs to rest. So you've got to plan like that and kind of rest as much as you run. Don't just overdo it and push yourself because then on the day you're not going to be able to run. The next thing that's really going to help you is get a deep tissue massage. Now I'm not talking about like the the relaxed massages you get at a spa, no. You need to go to like a sports therapist and they will rug out you and you're uh, going to really, really feel a lot of pain. Trust me uh, when I say this, it is the most painful thing ever. It's not pleasurable at all. But what happens with running, there's a lot of stiffness. Even if you stretch um, your, your IT band, your legs, I know I might sound strange saying all these words right now, but you do get really stiff. I get really stiff on my shoulder areas, on my calves, and I really need to get them massaged to get that stiffness out. It really improves your run and you get a lot better with that. If you're not hardcore and if you're not running majorly, if you're just starting out, you don't need to get like deep tissue massages immediately. But if you're someone who runs long distance i would recommend them the next thing is disconnect when you run okay uh for me running is my therapy i always say this it's, it is a hashtag i use in my posts as well because truly that's what it is i put on my music and um i disconnect from the rest of the world and it's just me and that distance that i want to run it's you know you just focus on that and it takes a lot of mental stamina and strength over body strength as, as i said really need to be focused to say you want to do this otherwise you will not be able to do it like you mentally need to keep pushing yourself i of course need my music which is why now i use this and my headphones or i used to use my phone and my headphones but i used to switch off all the calls and all of that it's the best thing to do that like trust me we all need time alone and this is the best way to get it okay so the next tip is like a bunch of things the first thing is going to be start slow uh, don't just rush off and think, oh my god, you know, everyone's running, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run. No, start slow, go at your own pace and then come into your run, especially if you're doing a longer run, especially if you've never run like at all. Like if you're looking at doing even a kilometer at that first stage, trust me, a kilometer seems like 
oh my god like when you're running it seems like 20 kilometers if you've not run the other thing that really helps is tracking your runs i use my apple watch at the moment with my headphones to track my runs and i get all these updates which are really really cool and really helps me track my runs before that i used to use the nike app on my phone with the armband and always track my runs tracking is really important if you're looking at competing like in a half marathon or bettering your time it really really helps with that and it kind of pushes you and motivates you you're not just aimlessly running uh the other thing i find that really helps is changing your routes so um i run on the road i don't usually run at a park because i don't like to run in circles i find it really really boring i like to run outdoors so i can see things look at people um you know dodge the traffic dodge the stray dogs that kind of makes me uh, excited and keeps me going as i run that's why i like to run outdoors and i keep changing the route so you don't get bored if you stick to the same route you're going to get bored of running there so keep changing your route just run everywhere okay it's time for tip number 10 which is my last tip for you guys it's eat a lot of carbs and hydrate yourself now before a long run what i love to eat is pasta and bread um i love 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 to eat pasta and bread that is my ideal go to meal before every half marathon so you don't need to overeat but just eat well and carbs really really help when you're running like long distances because you are burning a lot and you're burning it really fast the carbs will keep you going so definitely load up on your carbs this is not the time for a no bread diet or a no carb diet load up on the carbs and hydrate yourself that's really really important so what i do is before a half marathon i wake up about 2 hours earlier i eat a banana which is to just get me energized and then i eat, drink half a bottle of gatorade i keep sipping it and uh, that's pretty much all i have before a big run so those are my top 10 running tips for you guys if you're just starting out don't be discouraged and don't be overwhelmed by all this information just follow some of the tips and tricks and enjoy it that's the best thing about running enjoy the whole process because that's what it's all about and if any of you guys come to marathon make sure you cheer for me wave to me it would be nice to see some truffers there too and yeah i hope it goes well and i will see you before that on friday bye